Hello everyone, my name is Nick, and I'm going to give you the knowledge to troubleshoot a basic Digistar scale system to help identify issues with your scale system. I'll try to only keep you for about 7 minutes of your time, but generally it takes about 30 minutes to fully troubleshoot your scale system. You don't need any expensive tools or special tools to troubleshoot a scale system. You will need a multimeter, Phillips head and flat tip screwdriver, and a hammer. We recommend not using a test light because it really doesn't give you a good indication of exact voltage for your troubleshooting. Let's look at what a basic Digistar scale system looks like. A basic scale system has four major components with wiring in between. You have an indicator, a 12 volt DC power source, a junction box, and load cells. For this scale system we have four load cells. You may have three, you may have five or six. The principles of troubleshooting are pretty much the same. When troubleshooting a scale system, you can pretty much think of it as starting at the head and working to your toes. The head being your indicator box and the toes being your load cells. With everything else, meaning your junction box, wiring, power source, all in between. Now this doesn't cover everything that could be wrong with your scale system. For a more thorough guide, see our troubleshooting guide section on our website. However, we will cover some typical issues that you may see with your scale system. These issues include power supply issues, such as my indicator doesn't turn on, drifting or erratic weight issues, wiring issues such as a bad junction box, load cell cable or junction box cable, and finally a load cell issue, which can cause drifting, erratic readings, or inaccurate weights on your scale systems. Let's take a look at troubleshooting your power supply. Grab your multimeter, you're going to need it. Whether your indicator is powered from the battery on your tractor or a 12 volt DC power supply plugged into your wall outlet, your indicator will require 12 volt DC to make it work correctly. Use your multimeter to test your battery and then also check the voltage at the connector end of the cable to your indicator. A common issue that we see here at ScaleTech is a battery on a tractor appears to be good. The tractor starts, lights turn on, and the radio works, but the indicator won't work. After checking the continuity of your power cable, ensure there's no shorts. Try a different battery. Sometimes, a battery that will start a tractor still won't provide enough draw for your indicator. You might be amazed what a new battery can do. Never hook your indicator directly to a battery charger. And this brings up another good point. Always disconnect your power cable from your indicator while you're charging your battery. I can't say it enough. A battery charger can really damage an indicator, sometimes worse than a lightning strike. After we ensure your indicator is powered correctly, the next thing we want to ensure is the indicator is working properly. You don't really need any fancy simulators or devices to ensure your indicator is working correctly. You can simply unplug the junction box cable from the load cell port and zero your indicator. Sometimes it takes two or three times to zero your indicator, simply due to the fact that your indicator is adjusting its filtering for the change in input from the load cells. This is normal. It should zero after two or three times and remain stable at zero, plus or minus five pounds. If it drifts positive or negative, or displays plus range or minus range, you may need to send your indicator into us for repair. Give us a call at 888-962-2344 and arrange for us to look at your indicator. Pause the video right now if you need to write that number down. Okay, let's move on to the next step of troubleshooting procedure now that you know your indicator is working correctly. A common issue that we see at ScaleTech is that after pulling your implement out of the shed every season, inevitably a mouse, squirrel, rat, raccoon, or some critter has chewed up the wiring on your implement. Don't worry, that is repairable. If you need cabling or need to cut the bad section out of your cable, you can simply splice the cable back together and seal it off with a heat shrink. Let's talk about the different styles of junction boxes. Depending on the age and type of your grain cart, you may have one of three different styles of junction boxes. You may have a junction box with a circuit board in it with terminals to connect your load cells into. You may have a junction box with what we call easy make connectors, which simply screw into a yellow block located on your implement. Or you may have a junction box that utilizes connectors called lever lock connectors. Every type of junction box has its purpose and it is essentially troubleshot the same way. To test your junction box, you need to disconnect the load cell cables from the junction box. This is where you may need a Phillips head screwdriver. If you have a circuit board or lever lock junction box, you're going to have to remove the four screws that retain the cover to the junction box. 
After removing the cover, disconnect all the load cell cables inside the junction box, but leave the junction box cable going to the indicator connected. Once that is done, go back and re-zero your indicator. If the indicator drifts positive or negative, or if it displays plus range or minus range, go back to your junction box and separate your junction box cable from the junction box. If the indicator stabilizes and you could re-zero, then your junction box is bad. Contact Scale Tech at 888-962-2344 and we can set you up with a new junction box or cable. Push the pause button right now if you need to write that phone number down. Okay, now that we know the power of supply and indicator, junction box cable and junction box are working properly, we need to troubleshoot the load cells. I'd say 70% of issues with a scale system stem from a bad load cell. The proper way to check a load cell is to check it individually. Try not to use the method of elimination by unhooking each load cell until the problem quits. This can present some issues, especially if you have an intermittent issue on a load cell. It can oftentimes result in replacing the wrong load cell, which can be expensive. There are three parts to testing a load cell. First, after the load cell is connected, zero out the indicator and ensure the scale stays stable at zero. If it drifts or says plus or minus range, that means the load cell is bad. The second test you need to do is put weight onto the scale and take the weight off. When you put your weight on the scale, it should weigh roughly your weight times the number of load cells you have. So for a 4 bar system, if my weight is 200 pounds, it should show roughly 800 pounds. The final check to testing a load cell is what I call the tap test. Get your hammer out and tap around the framing where the load cell is installed. As a warning, don't tap on the shroud where the wire enters the load cell. This is a sensitive area. This can cause damage to the load cell. If your load cell drifts or reads erratic while you're tapping on it, the load cell is bad and needs to be replaced. So folks, there you have it. If you still haven't figured out your scale issue, give us a call and we'll be happy to find a solution for you. Thanks for your time and good luck with your scale.